All right, folks, uh, we're back in section 11.7, .7, Polar Form of Complex Numbers, Part 2, and we are now on page 2 of the notes. We're going to be looking at the power rule and roots, how to find the roots of complex numbers and how to raise complex number to a power. All right, so here we go. Uh, powers and roots. If z is a complex number, no oh, that's a, look at that, there's a typo. That should say complex number. You deserve better than that, folks. Let's go ahead and tidy this thing up a little bit. If z is a complex number with polar form of z equals modulus of z times cis of theta, then uh, here we go with the power rule. It's the if we want to, to know the nth power of the complex number, you use this formula, which is some French guy's theorem. Okay, now roots is are a little more complicated. For each natural number n, z has n distinct nth roots. The nth roots of z are, and then there's this crazy formula here. That one's going to take us a little time to work through, so I'm going to try and go a little quicker through the power stuff, and then we'll slow it down for the roots. Let's start by looking at question 3, part A. First thing I have to do is find the modulus and the uh, argument for this complex number. I'm going to do that real quickly right now. work for part A and I would uh, like to say that we're done and that is, this is correct but, but we're not. Let's take a look at this. Negative 5 pi over 4 is not the principal argument. Okay so what we have to do is make sure that uh, we use the principal argument which is between negative pi and positive pi so in order to find that we need to add 2 pi to this number negative 5 pi over 4 uh, in order to do that we're going to do negative 5 pi over 4 plus 8 pi over 4 that gets us 3 pi over 4 so we need to change this to theta equals 3 pi over 4 that is the principal argument so that's it we're done with this one now let's move on to part b What's unique in part B is that we have to raise two different complex numbers to a power, but then we have to take the product of those two. So we're going to do the powers first, and then we're going to flip that back to page one and review the product rule and take the product of those two powers. So we'll start by looking at z squared. Folks, there's a couple calculations, and I just realized that I did make a tiny error here. Uh, when I calculated uh, W cubed, I forgot to cube the modulus. So that's going to make this 125 times uh, CIS of pi over 2. So now that's correct. And we're ready to look at the products of these two numbers. So uh, I need to do the product of this which is z squared times this and I can use the product formula to do that so z squared times w cubed is equal to the modulus of z squared times the modulus of w cubed times cis 
of alpha plus beta. And this alpha and beta are the alpha and beta of my powers up here. So let's go ahead and substitute in what we know. Modulus of z squared is 100. Modulus of w cubed is 125. And then I have CIS of, let's see, alpha plus beta, that's uh, negative pi over 2 plus pi over 2. And that's 0. Huh, that's interesting. So now we have z squared times w cubed equals 100 times 125, that's 12,500 times the CIS of 0. And folks, remember that CIS stands for cosine theta plus I sine theta. And if theta is 0, cosine equals 1 and sine equals 0. So the whole I times sine theta part turns into 0. C squared times W cubed turns out to be just a real number. 12,500, it has no imaginary component. Well, that's pretty fascinating. So now that uh, we're awestruck by that, let's move on to example four. And example four gets a little trickier. Find the following complex roots, determine the result in polar form, then convert the answer to rectangular form. A lot of work to do on this one, folks. Uh, so let's uh, get started. All right, so let's get jump started on this. Uh, we're looking for the four fourth roots of the complex number z equals negative 81. So let's first talk about that complex number. Uh, z equals negative 81 is really negative 81 plus 0i. It has only an imaginary component, or excuse me, only a real component, uh, no imaginary component. That number has a radius of 81 and it has a theta of pi. So that is where we're going to start and I have copied the formula from above for the nth root of the complex number z. So let's see what we need here. Uh, uh, we need this, uh, we need r uh, and then we need to know what n is and, and for this problem n equals 4. So n equals 4. I'm going to move that over here. So n equals 4. And I also need to know what theta over 4 is because that's part of this formula. So let's talk about that. Theta over 4 is going to be equal to pi over 4. All right, so the one thing I need to recognize, and I will scroll back up top to talk about this, is it. Now the statement here says for each natural number n, z has n distinct nth roots. So if we're looking for the fourth root, we're going to find four of them. And each of those we're going to label with a different subscript. We're going to start with the subscript 0. And then we're going to go all the way through the subscript, subscript 3. So we're going to find... Uh, the first root will be w sub 0, second will be w sub 1, third will be w sub 2, fourth will be w sub 3. So there's the, the four roots. And so what we're looking for here is the fourth root of the number 81. And again, um, I'm going to now go to this formula. Let me actually move it over here. It could be more helpful over here. So I have the fourth root of the radius, which is the fourth root of 81 times CIS of theta over n, which is pi over 4, plus 2 pi over n. Well, let's see, that's going to be 2 pi over 4, which is the same as pi over 2, times k. Now, k is the value of each of these subscript, subscripts. Excuse me. So this first one is going to be times 0. Well, let's go ahead and simplify that. 
Uh, the fourth root of 81 is 3. And pi over 4 plus, well, let's see, that's going to be pi over 2 times 0. That's just pi over 4. So this is going to be 3 times CIS of pi over 4. Now from there, from, from there, it says, find uh, the complex roots, determine the result in polar form, then convert it to rectangular form. So this right here, that's my polar form. That is the polar form of the first fourth root of the number 81. Now what I'm going to do is convert it to rectangular form. And the way I do that is by expanding this expression right here. So I have 3 times the cosine of pi over 4 plus i times the sine of pi over 4. And let's go ahead and simplify that. That's going to be 3 times root 2 over 2 plus I root 2 over 2, which gives me the following rectangular form. 3 root 2 over 2 plus I times 3 root 2 over 2. And that's it. You may also see this one written as 3i root 2 over 2, but they mean the same thing either way. And at this point, I'm going to quickly run through the next three of these as you try and follow along. All right, folks, there's our answers, and uh, it looks like we have a bunch of 3 root 2 over 2s, and then some of them are positive and some of them are negative. And we have real parts and imaginary parts. Now, what do these numbers mean? It means that if I take this number right here and I raise it to the fourth power, I should get negative 81. Let's just go ahead and check it. I'm going to pull up my uh, TI Inspire, and I'm able to, because of the, uh, I have a the CAS version of this calculator, I'm able to do complex numbers in here. So let's just take a look and see what happens. So if I do 3 root 2 over 2, and I add i, oh, back up, back up, that's not what I wanted to do. And then I multiply that by 3 root 2 over 2. So there's my complex root. And if I raise this to the fourth power, it should give us negative 81. Cross your fingers. Boom. There it is. It's negative 81. And the second complex root I had was the same as the first, except that this real component was negative. So I should be able to raise that to the fourth power. Hey, it works. I got negative 81 again. That's amazing. What if I check my third root? My third root, both the real piece and the imaginary piece were negative. 
So I'm just going to subtract this. Grip it and rip it. Bang! Look at that. Holy cow, this is amazing the way this works. Last but not least, my fourth root had the real component as positive and the imaginary component as negative. What do you think is going to happen, folks? You guessed it. I get negative 81. So no matter which of these fourth roots I pick, if I raise it to the fourth power, I get the result of negative 81. That's pretty fascinating stuff. Uh, let's move on to our final example of section 11.7 and that is to find the three cube roots of z equals negative 64i. I'm going to start by uh, stating that this number, this complex number, negative 64i, uh, it has no real component. It's zero. The real component is zero minus 64i. Now the radius for this number or the r value is 64 and let's see 64 on the imaginary axis is going to be negative 64 is down so that means my theta value is negative pi over 2 and this one we're going to be finding third roots so I know that n is 3 and I'm going to need theta over 3 Let's see, negative pi over 2 divided by 3, that's going to be negative pi over 6. So the theta over 3 value I'm going to use is negative pi over 6. I'm going to go ahead now and run through each of these uh, three cube roots, and hopefully you can follow along. There you have it, folks. I have uh, found three cube roots of negative 64i. Uh, let's just check a couple of these, see what, uh, see what the calculator says. I should be able to take this number and cube it and get negative 64i. So that first one is uh, 2 root 3 minus 2i. Let's try that. I have 2 times the square root of 3 minus 2i. Oop, 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 oop. Oops, we got issues there. 2 root 3 minus 2i and again it's a cube root so if I raise that to the third power I should get there it is next negative 64i hey it works that's pretty cool uh, let's try 4i now and see what happens with that so I'm going to take 4i and raise it to the third power now folks you should be able to figure this one out because 4 cubed is 64. i cubed is i squared times i, where i squared is negative 1. So that would give me 64 times negative 1 times i, also known as negative 64i. All right, one last one here to check. Uh, we have negative 2 root 3 minus 2i. Uh, that's the same as this guy up here, except that first uh, term there is negative. The real component is negative. And there we have it. Again, we've shown that all three of those are cube roots of the complex number negative 64i. Folks, that, that's it. I hope you've enjoyed uh, this video, and good luck in WebAssign.